If you're running Google Ads, you must measure how well they perform. This can be done with conversion tracking. For example, a user clicks an ad, lands on your website, and subscribes to a newsletter. You should send that conversion to Google Ads because then you will see which ads, campaigns, keywords perform better and which ones are not worth your money. In this video, I will explain how to track Google Ads conversions with Google Tag Manager. You might be wondering which approach should you choose? Should you track conversions natively with Google Ads conversion tags or should you import conversions from Google Analytics? Personally, I always prefer the native Google Ads conversion tracking because it gives me more conversion data and over the years it has worked reliably while the GA4 integration might have some issues. For example, right now when I'm recording this video, if you enable user provided data collection, which is needed for enhanced conversions imported to Google Ads, then this will mess up your BigQuery data export if you are using user ID. And in general, Google keeps changing so many things in GA4 that sometimes, even for me, it's quite difficult to stay up to date. That's why I always try to track Google Ads conversions natively with the Google Ads tracking code. And in this video, I will show you how to do that. Alternatively, if you want, you can also import conversions from Google Analytics, which means that then you have like two sources of data. But in this video, I will be focusing on the native Google Ads conversion tracking, and it will be our main data source. Here I have a demo website with a newsletter form. And let's say that every time someone submits this form, I want to send a conversion to Google Ads. First of all, I will inspect how the form works. I will just submit it and then click subscribe. I was redirected to a thank you page. This is the URL of the thank you page. If it's quite unique, then I could just fire my conversion tag based on the page URL. But if this part of the URL is not very unique, then maybe I could ask the developer to help me with the data layer push, or maybe I am working with an Ajax form or maybe something else. So there are various ways how you can track forms because forms can be coded in a different way. Below this video, I will post some links to other resources on different ways how forms can be tracked. But right now, let's say that I ask a developer to push the form submission data, or at least right now, the actual event to the data layer when this form is submitted. So let's check that. I go to Google Tag Manager. This container is installed on this website, and I will just click Preview. And here I will insert, let's say, the form page, and I will paste that URL right here. Click Connect. And I will submit the form again, click subscribe. And in the preview mode, I have the event subscribed. So basically, the developer just added a data layer push with this event. If you want to learn what data layer is, then I will post a link to a tutorial below this video as well. So to track the conversion with Google Ads, first you would need to go to Google Ads, then Goals, and in the Conversion section, click Summary. Here you can click Create Conversion Action, then select Website, and then enter the domain of the website where you want to implement this. I will just paste it like that, click Scan, and then I will add the conversion action manually. First, we will need to select the goal category. This is subscribe because it is a newsletter subscription. And then we can name this, let's say, newsletter subscription. Right now, we are not going to send any value for each conversion. So we can either use this or just set a static value, for example, of one euro or one US dollar. Then the question is, how many conversions do you want to track per interaction? If the same visitor subscribes to your newsletter several times, for example, two times, would you like to track two conversions or one conversion? Personally, when it comes to less important events, because subscription is not my end goal, my most important interaction would be the purchase. So if the user subscribes multiple times, it's still the same user. So I would track one. But if I was tracking purchases where every purchase matters, then I would switch to every. And Google Ads interface also confirms that. Then you can leave all other settings as they are and click Done. Then we click Save and Continue. And here you will get the instructions on how to install it. We will use Google Tag Manager option. If you don't see this option, then I will post a link to a troubleshooting guide below this video because some users might not see this option. On this page, we have two things that we will use in Google Tag Manager, conversion ID and conversion label. Let's go to Google Tag Manager, Tags, New, Tag Configuration, 
Google Ads and select Google Ads conversion tracking. If you don't have a conversion linker tag in your container, then you will be asked to create one. I don't have it, that's why I will click create. In many cases, the default options are enough, so we will just rename this to conversion linker and click save. Now we have to enter at least conversion ID and conversion label. Conversion ID is right here. We can copy it and paste it here and conversion label should be entered here. So this is the conversion label. So for the bare minimum, this is enough. But later in this video, I will also show how to send some additional data. Now the triggering. In this case, I will be firing this tag when event called subscribed happens in the data layer. That's why I will click anywhere in triggering. I don't have the subscribed trigger. That's why I will click plus trigger configuration and custom event. Here I will enter subscribed because that's the event name that I have right here. Then I will name this trigger and click save. Now let's name the tag and click save. Let's test if this is working. I will refresh the preview mode. Then I will go to the website and submit the form. But before I submit, I will also enable the developer tools. I will click three dots, then more tools, developer tools, go to network. And then in this filter right here, I can add, for example, conversion. Keep the developer tools open for now and then click subscribe. Then I will see several requests. One of them is to google.com and if i select this request switch to payload then i will notice some parameters and some of them are label and even though you won't find the conversion id easily if you switch to headers you will see that conversion id is in the url itself in the past to troubleshoot google ads we were using a chrome extension called tag assistant but that one has been deprecated it still kind of works but who knows what will happen in the future that's why i no longer use it but to increase the accuracy of targeting, Google right now is pushing the enhanced conversions a lot, which means that together with the conversion event and some cookie information, you could also send things like user email address or user phone number, which would increase the conversion tracking on Google's end. So let's take a look how that can be done. Right now, I don't have any email address anywhere in the data layer, but let's say that I asked a developer to do so, and now I will submit the form again, and the email address should be there. So I will refresh the preview mode, just to check if the email is actually in the data layer. Here is the form, I will enter the email, click subscribe, and here on the new page, I have the subscribed event. And together with that event, I also have the email. So I could send this to Google Ads together with the conversion. By the way, keep in mind that right now there is a bug in GTM preview mode where sometimes tags are displayed as unknown tag type. This is not a real problem. This is just how sometimes the preview mode shows new tags that were just added to the container. But the tag should still work fine. And in fact, if I did this test, let's say after several hours, this tag would then be displayed properly. So it's just a bug of the preview mode. Anyway, let's go back to this email. If we want to send this together with a conversion, we can go to Google Tag Manager, then open our conversion tag. And here we will have to include user provided data from your website. We can click here and then we have to add a variable that will contain user information such as email, phone number, and so on. We can click here. Right now we don't have any variable. That's why we will click new variable. Here we have either automatic collection where Google Tag Manager will try to do some automatic stuff or we have manual configuration. I always prefer the manual configuration because that way I am more in control of what is being tracked on my website and what kind of data I am sending. Because with automatic collection, even though it looks like much faster to implement, well, because it is, you will have little control over what is scraped of your website. Of course, you can exclude some elements, but again, I like to be in control of what kind of user provided data is collected on my website. So I switch to manual. And then here we have to insert a variable that will pick the email from the data layer. I don't have that variable yet, but I can create a new one. That's why I will click new variable right here. 
then click variable configuration, data layer variable, and here I will enter email because that's what I have in the data layer. Then let's name this variable and click save. If you have more information, then you would need to create separate variables for each data point. Let's say one variable for phone number, one for first name and so on. And then once you have finished working with this user provided data variable, save it. We can name this user provided data and then click save. Let's save this tag and we will test this soon. When it comes to testing enhanced conversions, Google has introduced a new Chrome extension that you can utilize. It is called EC Assist and I will post a link to it below the video. You can add it to Chrome and its icon will look like this. You should click on this icon and then enter the domain of the website where you want to test the enhanced conversion setup. I will just enter the domain and click start scanning. It will tell you that there are some issues with the consent. I will mention them a bit later in this video. When I enabled EC Assist, my preview mode has disconnected. So I will just copy this new URL, then go to Google Tag Manager, hit preview to refresh the preview mode. And now the preview mode has connected and I still see the EC Assist. So now I will submit the form with the email again, click subscribe, the preview mode connected again, then I see that the tag has fired. And on the sidebar, I see that one conversion was detected, I can click it. And here I see the conversion label conversion ID that the email was detected and that everything is fine. If you want, you can also click select for troubleshooting and it will tell you that email address was sent properly. But the phone number was not it was not detected, but I did not send it. So I will just accept this next to the email address, you should click next, and then select what kind of email were you sending, then click next again. And here you see that everything with the email address was fine. Now speaking of the consent, because several minutes ago, you saw a warning that consent mode is also needed. If you are operating in European Union, or for example, UK, most likely that list of the countries will be expanded in the future. But basically, if you are using Google ad products, in, for example, European economic area, you have to implement consent mode. Now, consent mode implementation is a whole different topic, which can get sometimes very complex. So it goes out of scope of this particular tutorial, I will post a link to a documentation below the video if you want to learn more about that. Or I also explain this very in depth in my Google Tag Manager course for beginners. But in general, if you are using Google ad products, and you are tracking the visitors there, then you need to implement consent mode, at least the basic consent mode. But if you are operating outside of those areas, and European traffic does not matter. So at least right now, you don't need to implement consent mode. But again, who knows what will happen in the future, because the industry is shifting very rapidly right now. And that's how you can track Google Ads conversions with Google Tag Manager. To make your conversion tracking even more accurate, you should consider doing this with server side tagging. I explained that in my intermediate slash advanced Google Tag Manager course. If you found this video useful, hit the like button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GE4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.